All right, let's review what we talked about yesterday. <clears throat> Air metering force is... So air metering force is A, air metering force, AMF, air metering force is A plus B. A is what kind of air? Where does it come from? Impact, Impact air. It forces the poppet to the right, right. right or forces the poppet <laughs> open or close. Open. B is suction. suction, which tends to open, open the poppet would be the, the phrase there. So yes. So <laughs> suction, which tends to Open the poppet. C is known as, <clears throat> which is con a constant. Con five psi. It's a constant. Uh, D is unmeter fuel. Un fuel, which tends to close, close the poppet. Not equalize. Close the poppet. Close the poppet. All right. So fuel metering force is. D minus C is correct. All right. The reason why the pressure in C remains constant is because of the the nozzle diaphragm, the nozzle diaphragm. discharge nozzle. Be the, the phrase there. Yeah, I don't care. It's my class. I get to make up the words. <laughs> All right. That doesn't work there. Okay. Moving on. All right. So talking about this again. It's a little different because C doesn't have an effect here. So air metering force is, so we'll put air metering force is A plus B. It's the same thing. So chamber A is impact air, which tends to open the poppet. B is suction, which tends to open the poppet. And then the fuel metering force is? Fuel metering force is? B minus C. Look at the drawing. Where's C? How is C uh, having any effect on the poppet? It's D. It's D. Oh, got it. Better damn well get it. Yeah. Not this again. <laughs> All right. The idle circuit. All right. This is going to be a... Uh, this gonna be a tough one, but I don't know, not this one. It's okay. So if I want to lean this out a little bit, there is a plunger that creates a vent right here. And so if I pull the mixture back a little bit, what it does is it pulls this needle out and creates a bleed right here or a leak. And so if A is impact pressure and B is suction, if I lose a little bit of A, what does the poppet tend to do? Close. Close. If I lose a little bit of suction, what's the poppet tend to do? Close. Close. So the way I can bleed off a little bit of pressure or lose a little bit of suction is to connect them and open this up. So now instead of the vacuum in here really sucking hard, I kind of lose some of it through here and into here, and that means that pressure drops a little bit. So we lose a little bit of pressure right there. Okay, what's the vapor, vapor vent for? For air bubbles. All right, where does it go back to? The fuel tank. Yep. Or the what? Or the ground. Or the ground, depending on how you want to run it. All right. If I pull this all the way to idle cutoff, I pull this all the way out. It opens this up, therefore the air metering force pretty much dies off. But that doesn't matter because in idle, what keeps this thing in idle? The spring is opening the poppet. So this arm right here pulls back. This little ramp pushes down on that, which means this pushes up, which pushes on that little ball, which is not connected to anything. It pushes it up this way, which grabs hold of this diaphragm and pulls everything in and locks it off. All right, so back to operations. We're running. We have the main metering jet comes up into chamber C. Metered fuel pressure comes across to this side. Once we get over to here, if we are, well, I don't want to say just idle, it has a stepped needle, which helps to meter fuel. And that stepped needle 
looks like that. That's an enlargement right there. I will enlarge the enlargement. So that's, see right there, you can recognize that little arm that comes down, that little spring we just saw in the last thing. There's a little needle right there. Well, that needle looks like that. So you can see that in idle, this thing is pushed in there pretty far and really blocks a lot of fuel. So it's a just a very manual way of doing stuff. So we could say that right here at idle, at a very low idle, this right area right here is right in here and it blocks off that passage and just a little bit of fuel squeaks by. And then I increase my idle a little bit more, maybe go from 550, 600 to 700 or 800. Well, then I'm gonna get a little bit more fuel through, otherwise it's gonna to start to run too lean. And then once I get off of this initial in here, we'll say, well, that's, I know it goes from 25% to 65, awful fast. But uh, once I get out of idle, then we have enough air going through the Venturi and the impact tubes that it takes over. And so um, that's going to do the operation. So we don't need this big step in here, but we still have this for 65% cruise power. So we could call this little piece right there. What if we had to give a name to it? Crew stem, okay, it's crew step. What does that sound like in a carburetor? There you go, economizer. So we got a economizer needle if you want to call it that. If you don't want to call it that, don't, because it doesn't say that. So, all right, so let me see. Combination, I, oh, it says power enrichment. Um, so when it comes out, then it'd be power enrichment, but I'd call that economizing right there. All right, so we'll go back one. All right, so now we know what's going on right there, yeah? Yeah. All right, so there's that little, it's not drawn real well, but that's the little needle right there that goes in here. And so, you know, when it's all the way in there, it's, it seats up against there and kind of blocks off a little bit. Now, as you pull it out, more and more fuel is allowed to come through here and go through and out. That, uh, contr that control rod, that's controlled by the red knob? Uh, the manual control rod is actually part of the throttle, so it's interconnected to this throttle valve. So as you open the throttle valve, the needle moves out. Okay. They're, they're one and the same. Okay. They're not one and the same. They're connected. All right, so then we come up here to an accelerating pump, which is kind of a weird little thing. Note that there's a little passageway right there, top of the fingertips. All right, so what's happening is on this side right here, we have <coughs> vacuum, so to speak. <clears throat> so in idle, <coughs> this is going to be quite a bit of a suction up here, yeah? All right, so uh, accelerating pump helps us to go from idle off idle. So during idle, we are going to have a lot of vacuum right here, and that vacuum is going to come through here, down into here, and there'll be vacuum here. So what is it going to do to the diaphragm? Whenever you see a little thing like that, it's a diaphragm. It's a piece of rubber. It's going to suck it in all the way over here and pull it in against that spring, and it's going to sit there because there's a bunch of vacuum, which means fuel is going to come up through here, um, I think it's past this little check valve here is what they're trying to draw. So whenever you have a spring like that in something, it means it can go that way. So actually I take that back. It, the spring is holding it this way. So I stand corrected. So fuel comes up this way, through this way, it's gonna enter into here because that's a check valve. They can make, and now this is gonna fill full a bunch of fuel. And it's just gonna sit there as long as we idle. Now when I go off idle, accelerate, what happens to my pressure right here? I lose, well, I lose the vacuum. And pressure increases. Well, if I lose the vacuum right here, pressure increases. I lose the vacuum. The spring will overcome that. Push this way, and all that fuel is going to push this little thing open and fill this up, which then goes this way. So it's going to add a bunch more fuel right here that mixes with this and adds to the fuel going up. So now we get a, a shot of fuel through there. So then we come up over to here, and we have this little this, this little valve assembly right here. And... Um, We'll say the discharge spring is loaded. I like my notes. Discharge spring is spring loaded with a diaphragm. The spring keeps the valve closed until proper pressure and then it opens. So what we don't want is it's designed to have a minimum amount of fuel at idle. And if we drop below that fuel, this should shut off because if this just dribbles and there's a suction wanting to pull all this fuel out, like we've, we've Maybe we pulled the mixture all the way out, but the engine is still going to run down a little bit. Um, a few revolutions of the prop. Well, there's a lot of suction there. It'll suck the fuel right out of here, all these chambers, and it'll kind of 
chug, 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 and it'll keep going until it runs out of fuel. You don't want that. So this is designed to open up when it reaches the proper fuel pressure. It will push back on the diaphragm, pulling this pin out, allowing fuel to go this way. So at the same time, we do have impact, what does this say? Vacuum channel reducer. So a little bit of vacuum right there, which also helps it, so. Can, can you give us an example of, of proper <clears throat> RPM? I mean, proper pressure? I yeah. honestly don't, I don't know what the exact pressure is, is on that, that. Is that going from like off auto to? No, it's, it's or idle to auto? when you're, you want it to shut down, right? Okay. It's got to shut down. So if you go below five PSI, then this thing will shut down because you don't want three PSI dribbling through there. Yeah. It's not going to work well. Uh, let's see, when pressure decreases, valve closes quickly to allow fast and efficient cutoff. And that's what I said. Maintains a constant pressure downstream. So this right here is going to act like our pressure relief valve. All right, and at the same time over here, we do have impact air coming up through here. Emulsifying the fuel and out it goes. That is everything on here. The discharge not a meal valve that's working on both idle and off idle. The what? This? Yeah. Okay. It's not an idle thing. Okay. It's not an off idle thing. Okay. It's a thing. It runs the carburetor. Okay. It, what happens if pressure gets too low? Mm, if pressure gets too low, then Pressure gets too low, then more fuel is going to be pulled from the discharge. Okay. It is there to keep the engine from... You ever turn off a car and it goes... Yeah? yeah? That keeps it from doing that. That's the... I don't know what name should we give it. The anti-run-on valve. Okay. <laughs> Dieseling, yes. So why does your car diesel? It's still getting gas into the engine and it's still hot in there. And he's calling it diesel because your spark doesn't work, but that's, it's, your sparks are off. It doesn't matter. It's still running and pulling in enough fuel and coming up on compression and something's igniting it. It'll keep running. That's a bad thing to have a propeller out there continuing to kind of go. It looks stupid too. Got it? Got it. So the way to do this is to make sure that when you shut the engine off, you shut off the fuel. Well, you can't reach over and turn off the fuel because there's enough in there to run for 20 minutes. Not 20 minutes, a couple minutes. Follow? Yeah. When the fuel pressure drops, I'll give you a number. Maybe it's helpful. Fuel pressure drops below 5 PSI, that shuts. How's that? And it shuts to the right, right? Yep, shuts that pin off. Bing! Okay, cool. That's still really now, how much fuel goes out of this? One or two. None. I just shut it off. It's a shutoff valve. Mm -hmm. Lose your vacuum, it's slammed shut. So we got to have a little bit of vacuum pulling it open. Overcome this. So you have vacuum on one side, fuel pressure on the other, and a spring trying to keep it closed. When fuel pressure plus vacuum open it up, it runs. Oh, by the way, it keeps a constant pressure at 5 PSI. The more pressure you try to put here, the wider it's going to open, the more fuel is going to flow, just like we talked about yesterday. When you lose vacuum and fuel pressure, it slams shut because of the spring and cuts off the fuel, keeps it from dieseling. Got it? Got it. All right. That went well. All right. So we talked about the step needle. Um, I think I talked about this already. I think this is just what we looked at. Yeah, this is more of an enlargement of that, that item right there. Um, yeah, we'll move on so we don't screw anybody up. Okay. This does have an option for a automatic mixture control. And all it is doing is it is an item right here all automatic mixture controls usually have, they have some sort of bellows. And when we go up into altitude, what does the bellows do? Expands. 
Um, it's filled with an inert gas that also responds to temperature. So as it gets hotter, what will it do? Expand. Expand. Okay, so when it expands, it is going to get bigger. And here's a needle, and it will drop that needle. It's an inverted needle, which means it's narrower right here. It's narrower right here. And so we have uh, a bleed. It will go over here to make more sense. All right. So here it is right here, and we have, what chamber is this right here? A, which is? Impact. And this over here is chamber B, which is? Suction. All right, so this right here is the uh, just another representation of the needle that we had, but we're looking at this down here. So as we go up in altitude, this will expand, opening up a small vent between... A and B. So as we go up in altitude and A bleeds into B, so A no, no longer has as much pressure, B no longer has as much suction, what does the poppet tend to do? Close. If you close the poppet, what happens to the pressure in D? It goes down. So if it goes down, what happens to the pressure in C? It tries to go down, but the, uh, the valve, all the, the discharge valve next to it, it closes a little bit, keeps pressure the same. So if it closed, what happens to the fuel going out the discharge nozzle? Less. So when this bleeds off, A and B, less air flows out of the discharge nozzle with this butterfly staying in the exact same spot. Therefore, the carburetor will run... Leaner, everybody says. <laughs> rising in altitude to hotter temperatures. What happens if the automatic mixture control gets a hole in the bellows? Run rich at high altitude. Just runs like normal. Um, these aren't that common. And so I have not experienced a lot of airplanes with these in there but some of these airplanes have really cool settings it's not a red knob that just you kind of go back it has actual settings like auto rich auto lean um full rich fully it's yeah they have all kinds of different settings you can put them on which is kind of crazy so like start up how is it taking that input um i think through the the, the mixture controls the bleed between a and b Uh, this is the accelerator pump. It's just a little bit slightly different, but the exact same idea, if I remember correctly. Um, diaphragm on one side. We have vacuum on the other. We have fuel pressure. So at idle, it cocks this back, pulls the syringe, and it just waits. And as soon as we go full throttle and lose that vacuum, bam, spring pressure. Pushes the plunger forward, injects extra fuel into here. We get a momentary richness. And then it goes back. What the hell is that? Yeah. It's a hell of a point. So does it shoot fuel out when we go shut it down? And I guess it would. It'd have to. Uh, there's only two parts, vacuum and a spring. Here it is again. Okay. Power enrichment. You lose the vacuum. Um, but I, I guess the, the upside of that is uh, you lost the vacuum so that that pin up top and the, um, yeah, the word I want is just like, there, there went discharge nozzle, but not the discharge nozzle. It, um, the, needle. the needle closed. The discharge nozzle needle valve closed. So, yes. So if we lose the vacuum there and that shoots, then that's going to close. All right. So we got that. That's just another representation of the needle we're talking about, I believe. Okay, <clears throat> not so bad. That was the, the PS5. I could write a lot of notes about that, but I think we'll go on to this. That's the PR58. That's a giant thing. They're about that big. They're heavy and they're huge. Now we can get into our double barrels in here. That thing has got a two-barrel big old thing. So, 
All right. This was used on some of these aircraft. Somebody asked me one time. I'm like, I don't know. So there we go. And that's what it looks like. So all we got to do is dissect all that. But thankfully, somebody made that drawing, which I've actually sat side by side with these two for a while. I'm like, wow, they did a really good job. It's pretty amazing. Um, yeah, we can just stick with this one. What is that little wheel right there? Impeller, supercharger. Yeah. So this is going to dump fuel in before the supercharger, and then it's going to go across there. Now, superchargers are also used for cabin pressurization, but not when fuel is sprayed at them first. So <laughs> we couldn't do that. All right. We have chambers. We're going to start here. Chambers A, B, C, D, and E. It's everything we just talked about, we just added an E, but we didn't really because the other one before just didn't have a name for it. Now I just called it E, but it was already there before. So, all right, so fuel comes in the fuel inlet past the screen and goes into chamber E. So we'll call that, what, 9 to 14 PSI, I believe it is. And there it is. This also has a vapor return, although it's a little, a little float with a pin. So it's normally closed because the fuel will fill this up and the float will rise up and it'll block this off and nothing goes back to the return. But if bubbles should come in here, bubbles will start filling this up, which means the fuel level will start to drop. And when the fuel level drops, this thing will burp and all the air will run out of there, fill back full of fuel. And there we go. We got the same thing. We just got to pop it. Got an idle spring. This time it's over in D. It wasn't before. All right. So chamber A comes off of the impact tube down into A. So chamber A is impact air. Chamber B is connected to the, so chamber B is A plus B equals air metering force. Now let's talk about this bleed right here. So, I don't know, give you the benefit of the doubt. We'll talk about other classes. Maybe 25% uh, of the class listened to this and the other 75% had to do the oral over and over and over and over because they did not listen to what this bleed is for. And the cr I wish I had a recording just to tell you some of the crazy ass stories I get. Okay, we have the impact air comes in this way across an automatic mixture control. As I go out in altitude, what does this automatic mixture control do? It what? It expands, blocking off part of the impact air coming in. I need something to demonstrate this. Here I have an impact tube on my water bottle. And we have how much air pressure around us? 14.7. How much? What's the pressure inside my bottle? You think this is a trick question, huh? Being quiet on this one. It's 14.7 in there. Okay. Now, how much pressure is in there? Okay, so the automatic mixture control coming over the impact tube is going to change the pressure inside A about exactly how much like that? About zero. Do you guys follow? If I block half of this off, it's still 14.7 in there. In fact, I can block the whole thing off. What's the pressure in there now? 14.7. If you don't have movement, you have no pressure change. There's no flow. There's no change. You've got to have flow. So if you could remember this, you would satisfy everything. What's the bleed there for? Oh, without it, the automatic mixture control won't work. If you don't know anything else, just stop talking right there. The bleed is there to make the automatic mixture control work. So I was like, oh, what happens if the bleed gets plugged? Then the automatic, then the automatic mixture control doesn't work. Well, what do you mean doesn't work? Does it still expand and contract? Yeah, but it doesn't do anything. Okay, so you have to have flow. So here we have air coming in, and without that little bleed, if I, if I block this off, If I block this all off, then I just have my water bottle effect there. And 
there's impact air. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, yeah, but if you, like, ran with it or you shot air and pointed it out there, it's an impact tube, so it has some effect. It doesn't really, because the air, you're not changing vo velocity as you're flying a lot. So your air is just kind of set. It's coming in, it's sort of stagnant, if you will, and blocking half of this is not going to change any of the pressure going in, not enough to make a difference. But if I drilled a hole right here, there's got, can't be water in it, and put a vacuum against here, well, then air is coming in and going out. If I had just a little tiny hole right here with the vacuum on it, eh, it leaks out a little bit, but there's enough coming in that it works just fine. Well, now if I start plugging up some of the incoming air, just like back on the Stromberg, oh dear God, start blocking off some of that air, and the vacuum starts sucking more out, then what happens to this? It starts, yeah, so some of the, the uh, pressure in there starts to decrease. So without the bleed, air just comes in and fills this up. The AMC can open and constrict, and it doesn't close all the way. It goes part of the way. It can open and close all day long, and it doesn't do anything down here. So we got to have that bleed taken care of. All right. So with that bleed, that means under normal circumstances, the impact air comes through here, fills up chamber A, and tends to what the poppet? Open the poppet, push it to the right, and, but a little tiny bit, see it's an orifice right there, little tiny bit bleeds out and goes into B, and then through the suction and out. Just enough to make the AMC, AMC. there's my guy again, now he's with us. I'm back. Just, he's just enough to make the automatic mixture control work. So what is the bleed there for? Make the AMC work, okay. Promise you I'll ask you that. All right, uh, fuel comes in E and goes into D, where D is now the um, unmetered fuel pressure. C is metered fuel pressure, just like before. So here we got, and the pressure in D is going to be dependent upon on how much flow gets through the poppet. All right, so before we can talk about C, we got to kind of follow the path, so it comes through here goes down we'll talk about it. so we got our metering jets um, mixture control comes around here now C is connected to this right here what is my discharge nozzle like like a pressure relief valve so it always wants to keep the pressure right here at 5 psi if the pressure tries to go up it's going to open and more fuel dumps out to keep this at 5 so if that's at 5 and that's at 5 and this is all right here is connected directly to that, then this must be five. So we are right back to where we started. Air metering force is, air metering force is A plus B, and fuel metering force is D minus C. All right, so we're just, now I'm just repeating what we've already talked about. As we accelerate the engine, in other words, we open the throttle valve more more air comes down the throttle valve, more impact air comes in here, more suction is here, so if we have more impact plus more suction, it's going to tend to open the poppet valve. So the poppet valve will open a little bit more. If we didn't have something to counteract it, it would just continue to go all the way to its stop, wouldn't it? So what happens is it opens up a little bit, more fuel comes into D, adds pressure into D to equalize and stop it. Follow? All right. Pull back on the throttle. Suction goes, not as much suction, not as much impact. This starts to close. Then until D decreases to match it, boom, then it stays put. So it's everything we just talked about. All right. So out of D, and everything else from here on out is actually pretty easy, I think. Out of D, it's just going to come down through here and link to the idle mixture valve. Just like we looked at under the, the PS5 a little bit ago with that stepped needle, think of it as that. Because there is no air metering force at idle. So at idle, this thing is stupid. It's like, I don't know what to do. So there's a little spring that's holding this open. So it's just running dumb. right? It's just going to allow a set amount of fuel through here. And we can adjust this right here to say, well, um, 
it has micro adjustments, we can adjust it. But once it's adjusted right, when the throttle's in idle, this closes this off so just enough idle fuel gets through. If I add a little bit more idle, just a little bit more fuel goes through there. Then when I get to a certain point, air starts to flow, these start to work, and then the, the analog computer here sort of takes over, not sort of, it does. Yes? That, uh, micro adjustments, are those, those like on the Schedler, those three, three holes? It'll be screws that'll adjust where that is in relation to the throttle. Because this is not an air thing at all. There's no air there. And it could be little plates that move, yeah. I was thinking like on the, the mixture, there's three spots where you can, or maybe that's the plunger, I think. Never mind. All right, I will. Okay, from there, it goes past the main metering jet and up. Now, right here, we have a whole lot of business going on. Um, we have an economizer, which I would not call an economizer. I would call it a power enrichment. You can choose what you like. And we have a parallel path over here. So fuel normally is going to come up through here, find a parallel path, and go through the ox metering jet and out and mix, because the derichment valve is something that is open, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. All right, so fuel comes up this way, fuel comes up that way, we have two paths. But if we have a lot of A and a lot of B, then the poppet is going to open a lot, open a lot which means the pressure in D is going to be pretty high. And if the pressure in D is high enough, it will come into here and push back on this diaphragm, opening a passageway to make a third passage for fuel. So it's actually spring plus five. See that? Because yeah. this right here is also five. So oops, I got it in orange. I can't do it. Right here is five. So when C is trying to push it, C is trying to push it closed. Okay. The spring is trying to push it closed. Yeah. So when D... D right here, is greater than C plus spring. It opens this up, and you have three passages. One, two, three passages. Okay. And that's going to happen at high power settings. That's why I call it a power enrichment. Back off the throttle a little bit. Lose a little bit of A. Lose a little bit of B. It's going to close, so you lose a little bit of D. D is right here. It's not enough to overcome the spring plus five, and it'll close back up. And now we only have... Two passageways for fuel. Got it? All right. Moving on up, we have just the manual mixture control, which is just another controllable orifice, very much like, I would think, the marble shoveler. Just a controllable orifice that will, um, you know, we have three converging, and if this is out of the way, all three are going. If I want to lean it out a little bit, I can just close this and, and create another orifice there, blocking off some of the fuel. Comes back around going to find the discharge nozzle and off it goes. So simple. All right, that's everything but, thank you, but the accelerator pump and the derichment valve. So we'll do derichment valve last. Well, there is a primer, but I don't worry about that. It's obviously just an electric solenoid that opens up um, and lets fuel go flow to the cylinders. So, all right, so the Accelerator pump is kind of cool, I think. It's so simple. So here we have a plunger with two check valves. So link to the throttle. When the throttle is pulled back to idle, this is going to go backwards, and fuel will go past this little ball and fill this all up. When I accelerate, it is going to push this forward, causing pressure. It can't go past that ball, so it's going to go past this ball. It's going to come to this fork in the road. There's a little orifice there, which will cause most of the fuel to go up this way, push on this pin and open it, which causes this to open, which causes the pressure in D to go up. Well, it can't stay open for very long because there's an orifice bleeding it down. So all that pressure is just going to bleed down through this orifice and work its way out so back into this way equalize with this so the pressure here is equal to the pressure there so any force on this pin is equal to the force on that pin and when this is again when this is pushed forward it causes an out of balance situation there's more pressure right here than right here so it forces the poppet momentarily open 
until it bleeds back off and equalizes. <coughs> That's all it is. Accelerator pump works from idle to off idle? Anytime you push the throttle forward. Okay. You can be halfway, halfway to full throttle. Push it forward enough, and if it causes any sort of increase of pressure right here, it's going to open the poppet valve for a moment. Okay. So what happens if that orifice gets plugged? Is the poppet valve getting, getting open longer? Longer, it'd be open to infinity. Okay. Yeah, you're going to, it's a hydraulic lock. You would force fuel into here, and it would force a huge pressure onto that and force it all the way open to its stop. You'd be like, whoa, it's working now. <laughs> so... I don't know if that happens, but that's what would happen. And if you know that, all right, how are we doing? Oh, we're doing fantastic. All right, derichment valve. And I will write some notes here. Aircraft like this had water injection. And so it literally had a uh, tank full of water and um, alcohol to keep it from freezing and a little bit of water-soluble oil to keep everything from rusting. And water works really good for adding power to an engine. It really does. Um, it creates steam in the cylinders, which causes a rapid expansion. It's also good for um, anti-detonation properties. So at super high power settings, you inject water into the engine. This is not the water injection here. That's a whole other system. But what it does is when the pilot flips on the water injection system and that pump starts to go, you don't want a super rich mixture. Because what happens when I go full throttle without the derichment valve. How many passageways do I have of fuel? Three. Three. Okay. But now if I go full power, it's always super rich because, you know, we need that for the anti-detonation. But I also turn on water injection. It's too much. And also, what's the point? You know, we're trying to get rid of some of the fuel and use the water. Um, so the water pressure just pushes down on this, which closes that right there. So now how many jets or passageways do I have? Two. So derichment valve pulls it down whenever we turned on the uh, water injection system. That's it. That's the water injection system. We'll get to that much later. That, see, that end of the slides. Maniac. All right, you want me to write stuff now? I got a lot of stuff I could write. Let me see. Maybe too much. I worry at all. Um, did I write anything about pressure carburetors yet? No. Nope. All right. Guess what we're doing for the next two days. All right. Pressure carburetors. Uh, advantages. And mind you, these are the precursor to fuel injection. So right after these is fuel injection. And the Bendix fuel injection works very similar to these. So if you understand this, transitioning to Bendix fuel injection is like, oh, yeah, it's the same thing. Uh, if you don't understand this and you're hoping that uh, when we get to fuel injection, it all makes sense. So, all right, less prone to ice. Less prone to ice. Uh, especially throttle ice, since discharge, ASP, especially throttle ice, since discharge nozzle, is after the Venturi, is after Venturi and throttle. Remember, just like the drawing we just looked at, it came in the top, impact tubes, venturi, then it went down, around, then discharge nozzle, impeller to supercharger. Gravity <laughs> and inertia have little effect. I don't want to write this. Fuel is automatically metered at all engine speeds and loads. Well, that's not really true. I mean, it kind of is, but kind of isn't. 
it's not really automatically metered at idle. It's just kind of a, just, you have to set it up. So we'll skip that. So atomizing fuel under pressure. Uh, results in smoother engine. Maybe a better way to say that is it is better atomization, which then would result in a smoother engine. Um, this book said better economy. I think it's just more of a closely controlled um, discharge. So, and protection against vapor lock. Two, basic principle of operation. Carburetor senses mass airflow. That's actually kind of a thing. Um, actually, modern cars now have a mass airflow sensor on them. They're very expensive because I broke them. Um, and so this is actually more of a smart carburetor, if you will, because mass airflow to me ref means it's referencing density altitude to at least some extent. No, the carburetor, because of A and B, senses mass airflow as where a carburetor only had a Venturi. The Venturi doesn't do that. But when you combine the two, you get more of a, a sense of the weight of the air, thus the term mass airflow. And mass airflow to regulate uh, fuel pressure, the fuel pressure, fuel pressure to a metering system. So in other words, the carburetor is sensing the air density, which is altitude and heat. You still have to correct a little bit. Um, to regulate the fuel pressure, which is that fuel going into D that then goes off to the metering system because we haven't metered it yet. So it's regulating the pressure to the orifices. The more pressure you have, the more flow you have across an orifice. All right, fuel is not open to the atmosphere. Fuel is not open to the atmosphere. Like a float bowl in a carburetor, it's not open to that. Um, so it's under pressure all the way from the tank, all the way to the discharge nozzle. It's under pressure, fuel is under pressure. From tank to discharge nozzle, from the tank. Uh, more specifically, it would have to be the boost pump. So tank to discharge nozzle. Uh, controls fuel to engine by sensing two forces. What are those two forces? You got it, air metering force or AMF and fuel metering force or fuel metering force FMF. FML is something different, apparently. I mean, so is MF. MF? So is AMF. 
What is that? Adios. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> Uh, WTF, I know that one. Well, that's fantastic. <laughs> LOL, lots of love. Sorry your grandma died, LOL. See, it works. <laughs> lots of love. All right, simplified operation. Hmm, I think so, huh? Simplified operation. No, it created a drawing board. No, I used to make a drawing of this. Well, I did it. No, I'm glad I did it. Um, Operation, more operation. All right, let me see. We have A, air metering force, AMF, yeah, abbreviating, save time. We have air metering force consists of chamber A. I could write chamber, so we know that. Chamber A, which is impact air. Impact air. Uh, this is positive pressure. That tends to what the poppet valve? Open. Open. All right, break time. 